Let me just lay this out for you. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward stuff, actually. Back in, in, the, uh, in the 1600s, John Locke, excuse me, Thomas Hobbes, wrote a book called Leviathan, which became the foundation for both the modern conservative and the modern liberal movement. The modern liberal movement, in as much as in Leviathan, uh, Hobbes made the wild speculation that possibly people could govern themselves. Although he didn't push for it. That, that you know, didn't come until almost 100 years later. But uh, he also made the what is the basis of the modern conservative argument, and that is that the natural state of man, and by man we mean humankind, but you know back then it was referred to as man or mankind, the natural state of people is not to be wise or thoughtful or empathetic or insightful or any of the things that we actually normally associate with humanness, but rather to be brutes. That's our natural state, according to Hobbes. And this is the foundation of the conservative worldview. And when you understand this, then all this stuff about why would the Republicans try to rig the elections in Virginia and in Wisconsin and in Michigan and in Ohio, why would they do this rather than simply going with the will of the people? I mean, isn't the will of the people what our Democratic Republic is supposed to be all about? Well, in their point of view, no. Hobbes wrote that you know, lacking the iron fist of church or state in such condition, that is, in the natural state of man, there is no place for industry because the fruit thereof is uncertain, and consequently no culture of the earth, no navigation, no use of the commodities that may be imported by sea, no commodious buildings, no instruments of moving and removing such things as require much force, no knowledge of the face of the earth, no account of time, no arts, no letters, no society, and which is worst of all, continual fear and danger of violent death and the life of man, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. Now, keep in mind, this was in the early 1600s that he wrote this. By the late 1600s, the 1670s, John Locke had taken that a step beyond that and said, no, life you know, that we should have the rights of life, liberty, and private property, which was a radical notion because at that time the king owned everything, including your underwear. I mean, literally, the king owned everything. So life, liberty, and private property. And then 100 years later, Thomas Jefferson, you know, the Enlightenment began in, arguably in the late 1600s. Now we're in the late 1700s. The Enlightenment is coming to full flower. Thomas Jefferson says life, liberty, and they've got private property nailed down. So life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And then Jefferson, after, after he had first written uh, his, uh, his booklet, basically, about how we could be good, um, good British subjects. I guess it would be the, you know, the, it was called the Summary View of the Rights of British Americans. He then uh, wrote a, quote, draft of instructions in how a colony may secede, may remove itself from Great Britain. And uh, this is from his, his autobiography, or his uh, private diaries, actually. And I'm not sure if this has ever been published before. I found it, my, you know, I mean, his, his, his autobiography was published in 1909, and and uh, in eight, yeah, in 1909, 100 years after he left the White House, uh, by the Thomas Jefferson Society in this 20-volume set, which I read back in the late 90s, and used as the basis for my book, What Would Jefferson Do? So, I, you know, the, it may, may be out there. You might be hearing this for the first time. Anyhow, he sent out this draft of instructions, and he says, he wrote, I set out for Williamsburg some days before that appointed for our meeting, but was taken ill of a dysentery on the road and unable to proceed. I sent on, therefore, to Williamsburg two copies of my draft. The one under cover of Peyton Randolph, who I knew would be the chair of the convention, the other to Patrick Henry. Whether Mr. Henry disapproved of the ground taken or was too lazy to read it, parenthesis, for he was the laziest man in reading I ever knew, close parenthesis, I never learned, but he communicated it to nobody. And then, you know, ultimately, Jefferson uh, 
what came out of that was Jefferson writing this. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Now that is the Enlightenment view. That is the liberal worldview. That government derives its power from us. Government does what we say, what the majority of us want, and government is there to provide for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, to provide a base, a baseline for us, a, a, a ground on which we can communally stand. And this was the essence of Barack Obama's speech yesterday, President Obama's speech. So why would conservatives and Republicans feel justified in rigging elections? in setting up these onerous voter ID laws and redrawing congressional districts and then changing the way states assign electoral votes so that if a Republican runs for president, he's guaranteed of getting the seat, even if the majority of Americans vote for the Democrat. Just like right now in the House of Representatives, the Republicans control the majority of the seats, even though a million and a half more Americans voted for Democrats for the House of Representatives than voted for Republicans. See, the outcome would be the same for the White House with the so-called proportional representation that the Republicans are talking about. Why would they do this? Because they share Hobbes' worldview. They think that, you know, without the restraining force of church or state, without a ruling elite, which of course is them, the Republicans, without a ruling elite, it's just going to be the rabble. And life is going to be solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. And so it is their obligation, it is their duty to save us, the rabble, to save us from ourselves and bring their billionaires in and rule benevolently over the rest of us who haven't yet figured out what's going on. So when we come back, I'll have the latest on the shootings in Texas. We'll pick up your calls. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. Is this a new American Revolution moment? Not a, not a bloody revolution, but a revolutionary moment in terms of how we think of ourselves. 